Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to talk about how to figure numerator and denominator math problems. Now, whenever you have problems involving a numerator and denominator, you pretty much have to follow the denominator's lead because oftentimes the problems deal with finding the least common denominator. The numerator is along for the ride. You do do stuff with the numerator, but it, you, and ultimately you do have to follow the denominator's lead. So, for example, if you have a problem such as one third plus one fourth, before you can solve it, you have to be able to figure out the least common denominator between the two. And obviously the denominator is 12. So when you do that, you have to think about what do I need to multiply to get to 12? So it's three times four to get 12. So that means you multiply the numerator by the same number. Again, the numerator follows the denominator's lead. And similarly, four times what is 12? It's three. And basically, one third plus one fourth is like saying four twelfths plus three twelfths. Now, when it comes to subtraction, it's the exact same idea. Now, multiplication and division, it's pretty, it's not so much a reliance on the denominator. For example, if you have three fourths times one half, the numerator is just as equally involved as the denominator. You have three times, you just multiply across. Three times one is three. 4 times 2 is 8, so that's more straightforward than the addition-subtraction problems. With division, if you were dividing 3 fourths divided by 1 half, you would flip the fraction, and so the numerator plays an equal part as the denominator. So this would be 3 fourths times 2 over 1, and then this will be 5, or excuse me, 3 times 2 is 6 over 4, which is equal to 3 halves. Now, more often than not, though, the numerator does play off the denominator's lead. For example, if you have this equation, if you have x over 3 plus 2x over 4 equals to 5, again, to solve this kind of equation, you have to find the least common denominator of 3 and 4, which is 12, and then you multiply everything you see by 12. Again, the numerator plays off of the denominator. So 12 and 3 reduces, you have 4x. 12 and 4 reduces, there's 3, 6x, and that's equal to 60. Solving for this becomes really easy, but the bottom line is, in some cases, the numerator and denominator are on equal footing, but more often than not, the numerator does follow the denominator's lead. So, I'm Jimmy Chang, and there are a few examples on how to solve numerator and denominator math problems.